Hey guys, we're doing a product review tonight. We're going to do Lucky Duck Revolt, right? Roughneck. Roughneck. I'll talk a little bit about the Revolt, but this is going to be the Lucky Duck Roughneck versus the Fox Pro. I'm going to go ahead and pull mine in. Pull it in? Yeah, we're going to pull it right on in. This is going to be the Fox Pro Shockwave versus the Lucky Duck Roughneck. Roughneck. I get the Roughneck and the Revolt. I had a Revolt for a while. That's, that's why. why. That's why. Um, by the way, Derek Ramsey, I'm Justin Ham. Behind the camera, we got Drew. He never gets the credit. Drew does all. He just waved for whatever <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, but just kind of want to hit the ground running with these. Um, there's a lot of variables that go into these two units. I'm going to speak on behalf of the Fox Pro. I've got a lot more experience with it than I do um, Derek's Lucky Duck. Um, so I'll just kind of hit the ground running. Sound good? Let's do it. Um we did print some stuff off. We got some some paper material here in front of us, um, and we we took a little survey amongst the Moonlight and Outdoor staff. Correct. And they're running these units, mm-hmm. and we asked them, or you did, you asked them, hey, guys, pros and cons of the Shockwave versus the Roughneck. So these, these are our opinions as well as others' opinions. And, yep. I mean, keyword they, opinions. They, they lined up. That's yep. correct, and and we they aligned so actually pretty, perfectly aligned. Yep, correct. They they added a few things, and I thought, oh yeah, mm-hmm. good point. Yep. Um, and, and guys, I know these two units are highly um, compatible with each other. Price range. Yep. You know, I think I think these are two very like units that varmint hunters. You know, th- these are two that I, I think a lot of people want to compare, want to go buy, and they want to sit there and do a lot of comparison. So I think this is going to be a great video for those people who want to get a little bit more high-end varmint call. I have to call both of these a little bit more high-end varmint call. You yep. know, there's a lot of calls yep. cheaper. Um, you know, these are in the 500 or so dollar range. Um, so that, like I said, that's a little bit more high-end. So I think this will be great. Since I bought the Shockwave, Fox Pro has came out with... X-Wave. X-Wave, which is, I think, I honestly think the X-Wave brings the horn, the speaker horn. I haven't heard one, haven't hunted around one, but if you just simply look at the speakers, you can tell that it almost looks like they're trying to mimic the speaker off of the the Lucky Duck a little bit more. And, And I will say, right off the bat, I love the howls that that call can produce. And I think that is my number one top thing on the Lucky Duck versus the Shockwave is when you let out that Rick Pallet's howls. It's on his favorite. It's on his his favorites there. It just it almost makes the hair stand up on my neck. It sounds so good. He has two female howls that yep. are man their go tos, but uh, maybe part of that cone. But yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into yep. some of the pros. Okay, so guys, here um, on the Shockwave, um, just kind of looking at it overall, this tripod does not come on it. Um, I just set it up here on the tripod because this is how I run it in the field. Um, I just totally wanted you guys to see exactly what I do. Uh, It says it's a a Slick Mini Pro is the name of that tripod. I ordered it on on Amazon. Can't remember how much it was, but it wasn't much or I wouldn't have bought it. Um, You can see here um, I do run a, a lanyard that my buddy Cody made for me. Cody Woods, appreciate you, dude. Um. And it just, it's actually, he calls it a call purse. He can fling it over your shoulder. He actually made one yep. for that I have call. one for this as well. Yep. Um, so that's the only things that we kind of put custom on here. Um, you will see, obviously, I've got a decoy attached to the back of it. It's the Fox Jack. Which you don't leave that on all the yeah. time. You know. I just put this in here for the demonstration. Yeah, this pops in and out. Pretty awesome. Just kind of hitting the ground running. You can look at the front of the unit. Uh, these first off, these speakers do obviously tilt. You can lock them in place. That kind of is a pain in the butt when you have your lantern in there because it gets pinched down in there at night. No big deal. I just sometimes just leave them open. It doesn't. They're they're on there tight enough. They don't pull out and rock or whatever. Um, but on the front of this unit, there's an auxiliary port. There's a an external speaker port, two of them rather, and then your charging port. I've never had to run external speakers with this. Um, I don't ever run it on full volume. It goes up to 40. Yours goes to? 32. You wouldn't think that. I never run mine on 32. 
your 32 is probably going to be louder than my 40, mm-hmm. if I had to bet. Um, but that's just, you know, that's looking at the unit. That's what you get. Um, a lot of what Fox Pro has to offer is all wrapped up into um, the Fox Pro uh, TX1000 remote. <clears throat> this thing here um, gives a lot of options. Um, first off, there's preset. There's presets on the side of the remote. One, two, three, four. There's four presets. Um, and there's a Fox Data button, which this Fox Data is something, I'll be honest, Derek and I, we've, you know, used Fox Data. I think it's something that we ought to try. Just, I don't know. But basically, Fox Data, you can track the moon phase, barometric pressure, um, the, the, the call sequences that you were using, and it even documents at what time into the stand a shot occurred. Mm-hmm. Um, which is pretty neat. Um, Fox Pro has a feature. It's called Fox Bang. Guys, I feel funny about Fox Bang. And this is why, one of the reasons why, I carry a, a mouth call. If for whatever reason my batteries go dead or I just get bored on stand and want to blow on it or something, um, I do keep it attached to my lanyard. Lanyard, Cody Woods also made this. If you guys ever want to order a lanyard, let me know. I'll get you in touch with him. He's a good dude. But this right here hits that remote. My Fox Bang goes off. I can't tell you how many times I about walked out of the field with just one sock because of that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. It, I know. It's, it, it hits. This is what picks up the Fox Bang. If this thing gets bumped, uh, it's kind of mimicking the the pop of the rifle. It sets yep. the fo- Fox Bang off. It sends a signal to this to put on pup in distress. Um, it scares the crap out of me. Just going to be honest. I've turned Fox Bang off. Love the feature. A little too sensitive, in my opinion. Um, um, I already talked about um, Fox Data. Fox Cast is another option that it has. Something that, again, I've not used, but we just agreed before the show that we're going to actually set up a few stands. Fox Cast, you can custom design your call stand, your sequence. Um, you can pick which call you want at what volume you want it to play on, um, even leaving the silence between them. Um, it's going to be awesome. Um, Fox Motion actually is going to mimic like the prey, um, like a moving prey. So it, it'll kind of pump a little more volume from right to left and vice versa just to give it that effect of going, um, you know, an, of, of an animal dying and flopping around. Um, Fox Fusion is another option that you can do on here. It's just some fancy work. Not too hard to do. There's a button on the side here. It says Fox Fusion. You can play two sounds at the same time. So you could do a distress playing and then come in with um, some kind of like a, a howl if you want. Or you can play uh, two baby rabbits coming in together or whatever you want. You can fuse two sounds together. I've actually done that several times. It takes a minute to figure it out, but it is a cool future, a uh, cool feature. Um, and then last but not least, there's one that's called Fox Pitch. Guys, I think that's pretty cool because if you're, if you have some coyotes out there that are hung up, um, and you only have so many sounds on here, you can go into the Fox Pitch and you can make it a deeper tone or a higher pitch tone. Um, and it kind of opens your sound library into a whole nother set of sounds because you can change that. Derek knows when we've been out on stand, sometimes we'll switch from something a little bit more deep and, and low into something higher pitched or vice versa, mm-hmm. and that's just a little ounce it took. So maybe we ought to try to use that Fox Pitch feature a little bit more. Um, in a nutshell, that's where we're at. That's not including what we talked about on our group, the pros and cons that we came up with. Go ahead and introduce your your call and we'll come back to we'll come back to this okay so the lucky duck roughneck um started out with the lucky duck revolt um that was my first uh lucky duck call uh it was a nice unit um a little large um and it did the overall speaker housing did feel a little cheap um and the main reason that I did uh, change from the Revolt to the Roughneck uh, was not due to the quality of the plastic. Um, that 
it wasn't a concern, um, but it was something I noticed. Um, and uh, one thing I did love about the Revolt as well was the it set on a, um, a tripod, a um, rotating tripod, which that's one thing that I really loved about that unit. Um, you know, you start playing some of these distresses, I would turn it on to let it rotate certain directions. Um, and that is, uh, I, I love those options. Uh, what brought me on here, okay, so let's get to the Roughneck. What brought me here is um, the remote. Um, that's one of my favorite things about this unit. Um, it is the um, LD3X. This is the remote uh, for the Roughneck. It is a backlit button remote. Um, the other versions of Lucky Duck, their other calls, did not have a backlit remote. Um, so, you know, a lot of people online, if you look up some of these reviews on Lucky Ducks, they will mention that um, they just have to get used to the Lucky Duck other other hand callers. Um, they're smaller remote. If you have on uh, larger winter gloves, uh, you know, you can try to memorize the buttons all you want. Um, I was on a set a couple times and hit some wrong calls that I didn't want it to play, and that was enough for me to change. Um, I, do, I did not like that at all. So we're here. Um, nice large cone on the rough neck. I, I do like that. Um, it, it does have a better feel to it. It feels like better quality. I believe most of that is around. It has this rubberized coating that surrounds the entire unit. Um, so I think that's what kind of makes it feel a little bit more durable. Uh, has the tweeter on top. More, more durable compared to the... Compared to the Revolt. The Revolt. You know, it just had the overall 100% plastic feel. Yeah. Um, and it just, it, it felt like a cheaper um, a model. Um, so this just feels more durable to me. Uh, both of them have a tweeter on top and the cone is about the same size. The revolt was quite a bit larger than this unit, but it did also have the motor inside of it to rotate, which might've been the, the cause for the larger, um, unit. I, I assume just, just a quick time out there. I also remember you having a, a little problem with the little tripod falling out. I did. I had that problem. It, it went on with the, it magnetized, I believe. Is you did something to, did you do something to make that stay in there permanently? Negative. You were thinking about. I was. Trying to I was thinking out. about yeah. trying to figure out a way. Um, you know, if you lose it, it's black. We hunt mostly nighttime. Yeah. You're not going to find that. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I didn't want to have to pay the additional charge for it. But, but that, that was a neat feature. Yeah, it was. It was a neat feature. Um, but yeah, I like the big, nice, large cone on it. It puts out some very good, clear sounds. Um, what else we have? The on-off switches on the back. Um, I do like the LED on the back to notify you when the call is on. Um, hey, I'll tell you, I've actually went looking for yours in the dark, and it's pretty cool to have that little indicator, too. I don't have that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Having that little light to help find where you set your call is pretty cool, well, too. When I had the Revolt, when I had a hard time finding my call, I would turn on my rotation, and it would spin, and the Revolt had to light on the side. Oh, there you so go. So it may have to spin 360, but I'd eventually find it. Yeah. Um, I just bumped my remote. <laughs> I just said... <laughs> I know, right you know where, right where it is. Real quick. <laughs> it has a small cover. When we get underneath this cover on the call, we have a few different things available to us. We have um, some auxiliary ports if you want to run uh, some external um, decoys. And the, the middle is actually a charge uh, port if you run their battery pack, their rechargeable battery pack. It's about a $100 add-on, maybe 90, I think it's $99. Um, they do sell out from time to time, but I think it would be a great upgrade to this unit. I personally do not run that. I will run it, but I don't have it right now. Uh, I run the factory battery pack um, in the bottom, um, and uh, just I run 10 rechargeable AA batteries in it. Um, I don't have to recharge them every set. So if we hunt a full night, um, you know, a lot of times, some nights we'll hit three or four sets, some nights we'll hit eight or 10 sets. I don't have to recharge these batteries every night. I just do it because I don't want them to go dead on me. Um, and uh, I think that's about it for this. Getting over to the remote. Uh, it, it, it's, I love the remote. Like I said, this is the LD3X remote. Um, compared to the other Lucky Duck models, this is where it's at, um, if, you, if you want my opinion. So um, have a power button uh, available right here on the top right. I think it's similar to your, your remote. Uh, next to your option buttons, the, the power button is about in the same location. On the side of the unit, you have some presets. So you have a few presets here available on the side. Your G down at the bottom is your gain. So if you wanted to uh, mess with your gain, you can do that on your calls and change that up. Swipping over to the other side, 
You have, um, these are your screen settings for how you want it to display. You have daytime, which gives you, um, uh, I think it's black background with white letters, so you can see it well in the sunlight. Then you have uh, 2Ds there, that's dust to dawn. Um, and then in, um, which gives you your night mode, which is going to be a black, black background with orange text. Um, and then you also have your auxiliary if, if you run an external auxiliary um, call, that's what's available there. Um, you have your back button on the opposite side of turning it on. Um, I turned it on. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but you'll see all your calls listed. Um, so you have your up and down to scroll through your directories. Um, and then you simply just press the play button when you're on your call and you're ready to play it. Um, and then you have... Uh, if you want to pause it, you hit the pause button again, um, and then you can move back to other your other calls or back on the directory and change your volumes. Um, as Justin mentioned earlier, my call does go up to 32. I never run it on 32. Um, depending on our, on our stands and locations, a lot of times, maybe if I'm running some house, I might run it 75%, so I may run it in the, in the uh, low to mid-20s, and on a distress, I may run it at only uh, maybe 30 to 50%, so I'll run it pretty low on those. Um, on the bottom, you have a couple more presets um, and a recall. So we don't get quite as in-depth as the remote for the Fox Pro, but this is still a very nice remote. I don't have anything uh, you know negative to say about this remote here. It runs on three AAA batteries, um, and uh, once again, I can go numerous nights on a single set of uh, batteries. Um, so not I'm, I'm not calling either one of these units a battery hog. I know Justin, you do run a rechargeable battery on that. So if is that a is that a a product that you bought after the shockwave? It came purchase? with it. Oh, it did come with it. It did okay. come with it. So it didn't come with batteries, but it did come with the uh, it came with the charging cable. That's nice. And, That's a plus <clears throat> for that. I like yep. that. And um, it came with um, you know the battery the battery pack hookup. Everything okay. was in there. So That's nice. And guys, this just want to emphasize this is taking the place of the battery door um, right here. So if you buy this Fox Jack, it isn't a, an add-on. It doesn't okay. come. I don't I know if I said that earlier. I don't think you did. Um, but this Fox Jack does not, I think that's what it's called, Fox Jack. Yeah, Fox Jack does not come with it. However, you pop off your battery door, and you can see the, the screws that come in right here. Um, and it just screws right in and takes place of your battery door, and there's a little wire that connects into your battery pack. So um, all this is is a motor. It's fed off of the caller's batteries, which is okay. cool. Yep. Um, I did want to come back. I you kind of got into your pros and cons right off the bat. Yeah, I, I have. I didn't get into our list yet. I, I started kind of throwing some off the tip of my tongue, yeah. but there's there's a lot that we want to cover here in this video. So why don't we start? You start on your pros. I'm going to start with the cons. I'm going to get the okay. nasty over with. Okay. Um, the things that, that I don't like about this, my some of these things about the remote, I feel like I have to be a, a computer whiz to to figure all these options out. I feel like it's there's a lot more than what I'm capable of it's doing. It's a very in-depth Yeah, it's remote. intricate. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Not really a bad thing. I mean, if I took the time to learn it... Um, I'm just saying that this has a lot more to offer than what I put it to use with. Um, like just what you were talking, I was trying to figure out, I, I always feel like my backlight's too bright and I found the settings to make it go up and down. I still feel like it's too bright for me. Yeah. Well, I know. Speaking of the brightness, I, I mentioned we have day, day, dawn to dusk and night. Each one of those have 10 settings. So I can really turn this thing down. I, I, yeah. I run it too high. I need to back it down. Uh, I run it on like eight. Um, honestly, if I took, put this on one or two at nighttime, it's more than sufficient. So, and, and I'm going to do that on this. So each one of these modes do have 10 different levels. So that's that's a big plus for that's this. That's pretty easy to adjust the lights. I have to Very go easy. into a menu. I feel okay. like it's little. It's as simple as holding the button, and it'll pop up down at the bottom, and you press the, I think it's the volume down, okay. changes the brightness on mine. So it's very easy and quick to update that on stand. Not as simple. Here, okay. but It can be done, but you have to go into a menu um, and then figure it out, but not a huge deal. I mean, if you take the time, you'll get there. Um, so like I said, a con to me, I'm not going to say it's user-friendly. You, you're, he's at a whole different level. Um, 
when it comes to electronics and, the IT and, field, sure. and things like that than what I am. He'd probably think that I'm silly for saying that. Um, but to me, I think the remote is, is it, it's doing more than I can. And I think that's probably going to be the case for a lot of guys around the shockwave, whether they want to admit it or not. It, it's doing more than they are. Um, uh, let me see here. The cons that we have written out. It says due to long. Okay. So Derek, is, he always has to help me whenever I purchase new sounds to put onto this. Um, I've never put sounds on anything else, but I have done it on, on this unit by myself. Um, Derek does help me out with that now. Um, I'll buy some new Fox Pro sounds. or I, I actually do. Most of the sounds that I purchase are from Fox Pro themselves. They have a lot of good sounds. But I have purchased from um, Tony Teb um, and some other places through the years. Um, Derek, will you talk about talk about that? Sure. So the Shockwave, um, as you mentioned, the remote um, can get complex if you want to go in and mess with a lot of the features. The Shockwave, um, I'm not saying it's... It's tricky. It's not complex. It's a little more time consuming. So let's say that it's it's time consuming, slightly more time consuming to update the Shockwave. So you download the Fox Pro software, okay, um, and you plug in your cable from your PC uh, over to your Shockwave, which is a printer cable. Yeah, it's the same hookup as a printer cable. Yeah, um, and um, it will then sync, and it'll ask you to back up your files. So I back up the files. And then you have an option to import your sounds. And um, when, when I use the Shockwave, I think it loads all the sound files on the left side. And I think on the right side, it'll load your directories. First thing I have to do, I believe, is sync the, import the calls from my local machine um, over to your Shockwave app, load them on your Shockwave. And then I have to go into, I believe I have to go into edit, um, edit categories and... Then I need to go over on the left side, and all those calls I just imported, I have to, you know, if it's a big bunch and all going to the same category or the new same directory, sure, you know, it's a simple. I think I can highlight numerous and drop them, um, but you know, if you updated, um, let's say you just you just paid for fifteen calls and you don't want them to all be in the Tony Teb directory, for example, but you want this is a woodpecker distress, this is a rabbit distress. If you wanted to put them in those directories, it's a little more time consuming. I need to right. drop them in their different directories. And uh, then you do a save. Um, and once you get it all saved and synced, um, I usually unplug the shockwave uh, from the PC. And now I need to update the remote. So I need to go into the remote and do a sync to the call. And very, very quick process. This is a very quick process is syncing the remote, but it's just another step. Like I said, overall, it's a little time consuming to get new sounds on the Fox Pro. Now, I will say this about Fox Pro. I couldn't, when I'd done that, I couldn't figure it out on my own. I, I only did it one time successfully. Um, and when I did, I called Fox Pro on the phone and the guy was awesome. He stayed on the phone with me start to finish. He had a lot of patience with me. So um, I'm glad that Derek's here to, to talk about that into things because that was a little bit tricky for me. You talk about customer service. I've had to call Fox Pro once before on um, another Fox Pro. And I mean, that's, as you said, um, customer service is top notch. Um, and that's a that's a pro over here too. I mean, you got Rick. It's great. You know, you, you buy from VerminatorPC.com. You know, Rick really hooks you up, give you some extra sound packets. And I mean, very responsive. So, I mean, it, it's great for both of these companies. You say they're pretty neck and neck when it comes to customer service. When it comes service. to customer service. And I tell you, when I buy a product, I want good customer service. Um, yeah. And both of these companies, I mean, lead the way in customer support. That's great. So, um, since we're talking about calls right now, loading calls and stuff on here, I will say this. Rick Pallet with his company Verminator, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Those sounds are not created for anything but the Fox Pro. Yep. Or excuse me, anything but the Lucky but Duck. The Lucky Duck. It's a uh, LD file type, and it is um, compatible only with your Lucky Duck calls, just right. as your Fox Pro calls are compatible only with your your Fox Pro. And that's like MFK. Um, they've had some yes. kind of partnership with Fox Pro, and now MFK sounds are no longer um, compatible with anything but the Fox Pro Shockwave. I don't. I, I think the MFK guys are great. I love what Rick Pallet's doing. I messaged Rick on Facebook and says, "Is there any way I can get those sounds to to put onto my 
uh, shockwave. He politely said no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but, uh, and I imagine the same would be true if you messaged uh, MFK offline and said, right. um, said the same. But um, that is a benefit. I, I won't say it's a benefit. For us having both, it, it gives me the option to purchase from MFK and play different sounds since we're hunting the same stand. Right. Guys, you got to make different sounds out there. That's why originally he got that. That's it. It's going to play a different tone. It's a deeper, more pure. Very clear. Singular direction. I yep. mean, I honestly think that the shockwave, it's blowing. I've hunted places where I think I call coyotes from both sides of the road. I'll set my call just like this. One side of the road, one side of the road. Mm-hmm. And I've had success that way, and I've had them run across the road to get to this shockwave right here, mm-hmm. just like that fox. <laughs> the other, you know. Yep, yep. Um, this is loud. This is definitely loud enough to do it, yep. but I do like the directional. Yep. Like, like you got. So if you feel the Fox Pro and you just look at how it's constructed and you feel this thing and you hold it in your hands, it feels incredibly well built. That's on the pro list here. Yep. The guys, the Moonlight and Outdoors guys that run Lucky Duck and Fox Pro had to comment on how well this Fox Pro is built. Not saying that that's built poorly, but it just doesn't feel the quality. That's built like a tank. I right. mean, it, it feels very strong. Like, you're not going to break that. Like, you can drop it off your pickup truck. <laughs> Maybe that's happened. Maybe it's happened. Yeah. The guys, I will. It's, it's just going gonna, gonna to keep working. A huge thing for me is that this unit here is USA built. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll hear that in every forum about Shockwave. Somebody says, hey, or Fox Pro rather, they'll be like, oh, what's better, Lucky Duck or, or Shockwave? If they're a Fox Pro person, they're going to mention that this is made in the U.S. Made in the USA. There's more than three comments on that post. One yeah. of them says made in the USA. Um, and that, I mean, that should be important to us, guys. Mm-hmm. should be important to us now more than ever. But I'm just going to say it because it needed to be said. But uh, Derek, kind of take jump in on your... We'll, we'll, we'll keep in on a little bit of the uh, what, what cons we got. So you mentioned how well-built that was made. I'm not saying that this is not a well-built uh, piece of equipment here. Um, I, I definitely feel it's um, much more quality uh, once it, uh, than their lower models. Um, and once again, that may just be all around this coating that it has. Uh, one thing that I will say is if I flip this over, I didn't show this earlier, um, what we have on the bottom, we have a couple rubber feet. We have a stand to elevate it, and you may notice if you have a roughnecker, have looked at it online, um, this looks a little different on the bottom, okay? The reason is, let me unscrew this. So this is where a tripod would go. This is a factory hole on the bottom where a tripod like uh, Justin's slick would go, okay? And you're going to see this piece of metal here. This is something I've made myself. Let me know if uh, you know we need to custom order these. But the reason I did that here is because this is the factory lid, which I've lost numerous times on sets and have always found except once. About two weeks ago, I lost it on a set. Um, It it, it fell off on me numerous times. A couple times, not only did um, I look down and notice it, I'd be walking out and I'd feel this kind of jerk in my hand. And when the lid fell off, the battery pack fell out and unplugged. Um, One time last year... um, we finished up the night, and I bet you it was a half-mile walk back to our set where I hunted that night. And I got home that next morning. I took this out of the bag and went to charge all my batteries, and it was gone. And I walked all the way back that half-mile, drove back, in, and I was able to find that battery pack. Um, now, usually I keep a better job on tucking these wires down when I'm running this lid. So you might go, well, the reason it's not uh, staying in is because that wires. Well, I tuck them down into the opening uh, when I was running this lid. So uh, Rick's customer service, one email, and that day, uh, I can't remember if it was him or his wife emailed me and said, yes, sir, we'll get you another one right out. So good customer service replacing it. But awesome. um, to be honest, I'm keeping this. I may run it, but I feel much um, much better running this one that I built. So I lose my capability of running this on a tripod. I never ran this on a tripod anyway. Um, but now when I am um, on set, I don't have to worry about losing my uh, my battery pack or my lid again. So, and that was a real, a real that's that's a con for me um, is that door. And I don't know if other people have that problem. It seems like that have to because it happened so many times to me. Right. Um. So, 
that's that's a con for me on that. Um, like I said, it, it 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 still feels like a strong, well built product. Not as good as the Fox Pro, but I feel happy about it. Um, and then I guess if I had to put uh, something else um, as, as a con to this, I'm not really saying it's it's really a bad thing, but from being a previous Revolt owner, um, that rotate feature, uh, which is going to kind of it would have put me in the same boat with your Fox Pro with having uh, the dual speakers. Um, that option to rotate and throw some of that sound like an animal is flipping or flopping or, or you know, if you got some pup distress and that's, that's spinning. I mean, to me, that's, that's big. I, I, I like that. Um, and so I hate that I bought an upgraded, uh, more expensive product and it's lacking a feature of, of a lower product. Um, so like I said, it wasn't enough of a deal breaker for me to not upgrade. Uh, having the backlit remote to me was more important than having that spin feature. Uh, so so, Derek, let me ask you a question. You know, knowing what you know now, if you and I didn't coyote hunt together um, and you were sitting here and you had these two products side by side, and I was kind of putting you on the spot, mm-hmm. and, and I, you may be partial to that because of what you have, but what would you choose today? I'm still going to go with my Lucky Duck, not because I feel that it's an inferior product or better than your Shockwave. I think they're very comparable items. I am still going to stick with the original reason that I bought this uh, Lucky Duck unit, and that's because um, Fox Pro has been in the game for how long? You know, they've been, in the, they've been in the market, in the game for so long. They've been a huge player. Um, a lot of these new Coyote hunters, you, you go to any store and you go to their varmint section, Fox Pro's sitting there. Yep. You know, so what are they going to buy? They're going to buy Fox Pro. And they're going to have Fox Pro sounds. sounds. And that's it. So here I am with a well-built unit, um, great customer service to back it, Yep. and I have new sounds. So when you have 20 Coyote hunters out there and 18 of them are running Fox Pros, um, well, now, you know, maybe maybe I shouldn't be promoting this so much. But, uh, yeah. you know, but this Lucky Duck, man, um, sounds great. The uh, horn's great. Um, and I, I would stay, I would still buy this today over the shockwave. Um, the pros and cons that you and I are talking about, they're not going to push me one way or another. Um, but it's just me personally going that I have sounds that you don't mm-hmm. and that most people in the area do not. Right. Um, but hey, those of you that have the, the shockwave can go out and buy some MFK. That's right. That's and you can take the place of, uh, of, of what he's talking that's about all right my, now. That's on my cons list. Uh, one thing that we talked about on yours that was a con that mine's, a, that mine's um, uh, positive about is this little flap I flipped up earlier. I didn't get into it. Um, you also have your um, SD card, okay? So you pop this SD card out. No cable needed. Pop it right in your PC. Most of your new PCs, laptops, they all have the SD reader right on them. I pop that into my computer open up my directory for um, that SD card, and there's every directory that's on my remote, okay? So if I have my Tony Teb directory, my Rabbit Distress, my Bird, Coon, whatever, there's my directories. I open the directory, I drag my new uh, file right in, and slap it back in my machine. That's it. I'm done. Um, And when you uh, turn on your caller first, and then you turn on your remote, you're done. This it sinks room, itself. Sinks itself. Um, when you, you, I turn on my caller first because when you turn on the remote, the first screen that pops up is, is a blue screen that says finding caller. Um, so I pop this on, turn this on. This this remote loads in probably about five seconds or so. It's pretty quick to open up, and it's synced. It's ready to go. It's ready to hunt with all your new calls right there ready. That's awesome. You have the auxiliary ports. You have the presets. Um, you can have up to 2,000. That's true. Lucky Duck, um, obviously, don't have that many, but Lucky Duck does state that the Roughneck can handle 2,000 calls. Uh, how about Fox Pro? What does, Fox, what does your shockwave say? Man, you're gonna, uh, I'm almost embarrassed to say I can only have 1,000 sounds over here, guys. Only 1,000. Only 1,000. Only 1,000. Which doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me because it, I thought they go on SD cards. I don't understand why it maxes out at 1,000. I 1, do not know the reason. As long as the SD card could handle, I figured it could load. Uh, I'm not sure the reasoning behind the 1,000 to 2,000. So that's what it says, so we'll go with it. Yep. Um, I honestly don't know if I would go with the Fox Pro or the Lucky Duck. I feel like I'd probably go... With the Fox Pro, because how long have you been? How long have you been a Fox Pro guy? 
As long as I've been in the game. And you've been in the game for? Since like 2007-ish, somewhere in there. 13, 14 years, Fox Pro. Yeah. Yeah, so you, I mean. I started with the Fox Pro Scorpion um, with the TX100 remote, which is far different. Um, <laughs> yeah. Far different. My first, well, my very first call was a Fox Pro Spitfire? Spitfire. Yep. Maybe Spitfire 2. Spitfire, Spitfire 2. Yeah, yep. a little bit different remote. but So I, I can't tell you which way I'd go, but um, I, I would probably stick with the Fox Pro. Um, I love their, I, I just, I love the the Fox Pro Fur Taker guys. Um, the Abner, he's awesome. Al Morris is awesome. Those guys, they have their own TV so, show. Yeah. I mean, you have a connection there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm friends with these guys on Facebook. I, I don't I love him. Now you're friends with Rick as well on Facebook. I am, and I like Rick too. But he wouldn't give me a sound. So I don't <laughs> understand it. So, well, I really I almost hope. unfriended him. <laughs> I, I really hope that uh, we get some people out here that uh, you know. I know this has to be a debate that people go back and forth in their head. I mean, these are two equally close to equally priced uh, products, um, and I, I see a lot of posts online going which one to buy. Yep. And I hope this really. Uh, is enough information to help help someone out, swing them one way or another. I've shot give them killed, confidence. I've shot and killed coyotes over that exact call, and he shot and killed coyotes over this yep. shockwave. So, um, to me, it's honestly they're neck and neck guys. So you know, you've got the the biggest con. What's the biggest con? Just throw it out there. Battery packs that that, that lid. To me, okay. If I had one con about this, is that battery pack lid? Maybe we get okay. some comments. Is is that something that is is that just me? Did I do something wrong? I don't think so. My wires are tucked all the way down in with my battery pack. And um, is that me? Or is that is that a problem that yep. with the Lucky Duck Roughneck? And I'll go my biggest con um, is when I was trying to put the sounds on this myself. It was kind of tough. Compared to what you just described that you're doing, Fox Pro definitely has has us doing too much. But Number one, what do you got then? You, you, we went with our number one con. What's our number one pro? Yeah. Um, number one pro, made in the USA. I'm not just saying it, it is important to me. Mm -hmm. So I mean I think I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um I'm just gonna go clarity. When I when I do crank this thing to a loud volume, I mean with the tweeter and that cone, I mean this thing is clear. I never run it on thirty two, and I'm sure it's just as clear on thirty two as it is on twenty four, twenty five when I lay yeah. out some loud howls. It's it is super clear. I will say that Lucky Duck takes the uh takes the edge when it comes to tone and clarity. Um but I think in, in on Fox Pro's defense when it comes to that is we have the directional speakers. So if we had all, you know, the same power going to one horn, I feel like it's split yep, into one two. One larger horn to help that's out. That's what's going on, my opinion. Sure. So that's where we're at. Fox Pro Shockwave. You can see him right here. Again, guys, the tripod is something I added on. Get the directional speakers. To hold them in, in your hand, I mean, you can definitely tell um, both of them seem to be well built. I didn't mention it. I do like this small gap right here. That's a pro for me. Uh, hang that on a fence. Yeah. Hang it on a tree branch. I've done that on some sets. I don't really know what else to say. I think that you got two great units here. Fox Pro, I think, is a little bit more intricate, um, a little, you know, a little bit more advanced. I'll agree. Than the Lucky Duck. Um it's kind of backwards. I think I should be a lucky duck guy then. <laughs> Derek's definitely more intricate than me. Um, but like I said, I was a I was a player in the Fox Pro all along, so I just kind of old dog new trick kind of thing. But this this gets the this gets the edge when it comes to tone and and sound quality. And not that volume's ever an issue because we never have to run these. Either one of these units have to be ran all the way up. We're not on an area where we need to do that. Right. Now, guys, that's one thing I do want to bring up. Ambient noise. Um, like we hunt some with our backs to an interstate. There's a long, a loud roar. A big rips, back, big rivers we hunt yep. next to. We do have to crank these calls up more than what I typically would. Um, but aside from that, um, I can't ever fault the shockwave for not being loud enough because I never have to turn the volume up full. In fact, the shockwave called in six coyotes this past weekend on one set from 
the, the, we saw them things running in the thermal monocular. Uh, I don't know. It, close to a mile away. It was close to a mile. We heard them at another set, and we left and went the opposite direction of where they were at. We're going, we'll go back over there last. Yep. That whole pack came in. And I mean, I'm not kidding. It was a mile away. And when they came in, they came, They were running. I mean, yep. they were hauling across that field, got them all the way into 200 yards. And, and, guys, that was one where this thing was closed like this, and it was turned this way, calling both sides of the road. So Located them, got yep. over to the side of the road where we needed to be hunting, mm-hmm. and done, done good. And it was a quiet night. There was hardly any wind. Um, and I was running this, and I don't know how they heard it. I don't know how they heard it. Yeah. Um, but Was that a Fox Pro call? Or was that a Tony Tebb? Uh, Do you remember? It was Woodpecker. It was, it was Woodpecker. I just don't yeah, know who it was. Yeah, it was Tony Tebb. Tony Tebb? Yep. It was the Bird Box. Okay. Tony Tebb. Called in bird six box. from, from a mile away. <laughs> it it was a mile away. Yeah, it, 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 it was literally they, there was nothing out there, wide open. And when we turned the monocular out, and we saw it looked like ants in mm-hmm. the monocular, and and I had to look at them for a while trying to figure out what in the world it was. But um, so to say that I need more volume, which I would have here, um, that night made me believer that you know you don't necessarily need volume. Those coyotes can hear a lot better than we can. So. Neck and neck, guys. Hopefully this helps you guys uh, decide what you want to do. you got two great callers. Customer service is awesome. Both sides. Um, Loading sounds a little bit more intricate here. Um, That's about all I've got. That's it. Sounds good. If you guys want to know anything more, if there's anything we can do to help you, um, get a hold of Derek and myself or just, you know, message the page, Moonlighting Outdoors. We'll both see the messages. Um, and we'd be more than happy to to help you out. And we also have some of our Moonlight and Outdoors guys are running these same units. If it's something we're not sure about, we can bounce it off our team, and we can let you know, um, you know what the what uh, what everybody thinks. So, like and comment on this if you would it means a lot to us. Moonlight and Outdoors, Derek Ramsey, Justin Ham, appreciate you. Thanks, Drew. We're out.